everyone, it is your friend, psychic medium, Sean Michael Rutherford. I am doing this video because I wanted to show the components and um, what goes into making this grid altar that I have for healing in my apartment. Um, I love teaching crystal grids. I love building crystal grids. I love making complex crystal grids. And um, I've taught building crystal grids for yourself a few times, both at the Metaphysical Resource Center and the Witch Depot, and both classes have been quite enjoyable. <coughs> and, and I really wanted to bring um, what I do with these grids to the public and really let everyone know. I, I, I love sharing information. I love teaching. I love um, raising information for the masses. Uh, I believe that is one of the best things that we can do as spiritual people is share knowledge of spirit because no one person, no one culture, no one spirituality owns the information of spirit. Um, it is taught to us by our ancestors. Uh, it is taught to us by our guides, by our deities, by the people we worship and our souls. And so whenever I do something, I try to um, make sure that I'm capable of teaching it to other people um, because it's not just my information. I might be inspired to do it by spirit and source but it's not my information. I don't own any rights to it. Um, I don't, um, I don't, um, I don't have it trademarked. I can't trademark it. It's not my information. It is spirit's information. And so while I do, um, I do ask that my classes aren't shared, like my PowerPoints and things like that, the information that I build, um, and the tools that I build to teach others. Um, I give information freely. Uh, I do, you know, charge for my classes. That's for my time. And that's what all us spiritual practitioners do. You know, we charge for our time um, just as you would charge for your time, for your job and what you enjoy, enjoy doing um, to pay your bills and, and live your life. But the information... Uh, when I can and when I have time, I try to give um, publicly, like this healing altar. This was something that was inspired to me by spirit, and therefore I have been um, really inspired to make this video and share it with everybody who would like to see it. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get to the components of the crystal healing altar that I have set up uh, today. All right, so as you can see here is the healing altar. Uh, there's a lot of components, and I'm going to really try to go through this as simplistically as possible, um, make it as easy to follow as I can. Um, starting off, um, for me, the basis of every crystal grid is one or two components. So what is the basis for my grid. What am I building my grid around? Well, I had recently just bought this really cool uh, copper pyramid, and I was really inspired to use that as the basis of the grid. Pyramids funnel spirit energy down through their singular uh, uh, point at the top and funnel it down through all sides. And what it does, is it kind of creates a vortex inside the pyramid that really creates this charge of energy and builds energy and builds energy and builds energy. Um, and for me, I knew that that's really what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to be able to put names inside something and place that inside the pyramid so that I could funnel all the spiritual energy of this grid and from spirit and that from my prayers into the names inside the, the box. Uh, then comes the second, which is what is the basis of the energy that I want in the grid? And I knew the basis that I wanted was love. Love is the, one of the most powerful forces in all of the universe and in spirit. 
And when it's done unconditionally and when it's done um, honestly, it is an extremely powerfully healing um, force of, of, of energy. Think about, you know, when you would get a scrape or a bruise or get hurt um, as a child, you know, your mother or your parent would, you know, grab you up and kiss it and love on it. And then it seemed like everything would go, all the pain would go away or they would, um, all that love would get funneled into helping you heal. And that really helped the situation. Uh, that's energy healing. Uh, so when you work with love in a very unconditional basis, as I try, don't always succeed to do, but try to do, um, it is a very healing energy. So we start with this metal, this specifically this copper. Copper is one of the most uh, conductive metals when it comes to energy. Uh, copper pyramid. Then I knew I needed a lot of rose quartz. So I have a rose quartz pendulum, which you can see swinging here. I tied it. I wrapped the chain around the top, the top of the pyramid. And I have rose quartz small chunks throughout the whole pit, uh, grid. I have the sphere here. I have this rose quartz pyramid. And for me, <clears throat> it's not so much about things being symmetrical. It's about things going where they belong. So you have to really find your ability and you really have to allow your ability to listen to your soul and listen to your, your spiritual intuition to help you build these grids because you really should place things and put things where the energy pulls them versus what looks pretty. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't make a beautiful grid. I do believe this came out quite beautiful, uh, but I do think that the best grids are done through intuitive nature. So next, um, I knew that I wanted to add spheres. So spheres create a bubble of space and that space is outside of the normal time and, and um, spatial flow. So what happens is this bubble gets built around this grid and because I have multiple spheres, uh, these spheres kind of layer like an onion, uh, layer upon layer upon layer projected around this grid. And what happens is that energy protects this grid and the energy work that's going on from outside forces. Uh, there's other things that I have that protect it as well, but spheres create, like I said, this bubble of space and that is outside of the normal time and spatial flow. And it sort of creates a pocket dimension. I don't want to say dimension, but it kind of creates this pocket space of energy where time and energy doesn't flow the same. It flows better. So 20 minutes might feel like an hour uh, or an hour might feel like 20 minutes, depending on the intention. So if you're trying to really sit with spirit for a long time and really build up your energy, uh, but you don't have an hour to spend because you're really busy. You know, you use a crystal sphere and you set the intention of, I, I, need, to, I need to build up an hour's worth of energy in 20 minutes. <clears throat> but say you want to sit in, sit in spirit for, sit in energy and meditate for an hour. Um, and you want to be there for an hour and you put yourself in there for an hour, that hour can feel like 20 minutes. And so that's one of those beautiful things about how crystal spheres work. And they are also really great energy um, pumps because uh, spheres produce this sense of flow and the sense of ebb and flow. Um, next, I have tons of selenite. So I have three selenite wands here. I have this large selenite bar. The selenite bar here is to represent setting this space away from the rest of my apartment. I knew that I wanted to make sure that I had a barrier that provided protection from anything that was going on from the rest of my apartment. So say when I'm not sitting over here doing prayers, when I'm not over here working on people, um, say I'm watching a horror movie and I'm scared and I'm freaking out, the energy from what I'm doing in my living room will not affect the, this altar at all. Hence why I put the selenite bar here. Selenite on either side is to sort of do the same thing. Um, selenite purifies crystals. It keeps everything purified around it. It's sort of like um, it's sort of like an air ionizer. So ionizers pull in and attract negative ions and 
purify them into positive ions and then pump out positive ions into the room. And so selenite does the same thing. Selenite will pull in negative energy, transfer it into positive, purify it, cleanse it, transfer it into positive, and then pump that positive back out. So it essentially keeps this entire grid and altar space purified and cleansed at all times. I also just really love these wands and I wanted to create this really cool little box effect with a selenite. Um, we have a crystal quartz Vogel wand. Vogel wands really help uh, transmit energy very cleanly. Um, next, I so I work with Mary, Mother Mary, and Lord Ganesh uh, with healing work. They are they are my healers. I, I do work with Raphael every now and again, but Mary and Ganesh have proven themselves to me to have shown themselves to be my um, healer duo and spirit. So I always try to show um, Ganesh and Mary when I do a healing grid and have um, some sort of imagery for them as well, just to channel their energy. Um, then I knew that one of the things I wanted to use was hyssop. So hyssop is an herb that is used in spiritual healing and um, in teas and different things. I'm not saying that you should drink it. I'm just saying that I would use it. I use it for spiritual purposes. Um, it was quoted in the Bible and, and other spiritual texts that hyssop had a very, very powerful healing um, capability. It would wash people of their sins. It would even wash people and cleanse people of their original sins and their mortal sins. And it was used in the Bible um, several, several different places. And I've recently um, learned this information. Um, and it was used as a, a major, major purifier. And so I knew that one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I used in, um, in this grid was a representation and the use of, use of hyssop because it helps heal and cleanse. So what I do um, is I have a small crystal bowl here of hyssop and I would, um, I'll use it in a way that I'll show you in just a minute. So next I had to sort of decide how did I want to clarify the energy. So I knew that I wanted the energy to be about love, right? Hence all the rose quartz. I knew that I wanted the focus to be on love and healing but I needed to pump as much energy as I possibly could into this grid. Well, what do you do in, in a small amount of space? I have a small apartment. I love my apartment, but the space is small, so I don't have huge, I mean, I have tons of crystals above this, but I wanted the altar to be compact and I wanted it to pump a lot of energy. So I chose the types of crystals that I used carefully. So, um, we have two more rose quartz chunks right here inside the, uh, inside the pyramid. Let's see if you can see that. So here we have a rose quartz chunk and another little rose quartz chunk. Well, on the other side here, I have two pieces of a crystal called phenocyte. And phenocyte is a very, very high vibrational um, healing crystal um, with immense energy, immense energy. And so what I had in my mind was to place that inside the pyramid opposing the, the rose quartz because I wanted them to kind of create this back and forth. I wanted the rose quartz to communicate with the phenocyte and the phenocyte send more energy back to the rose quartz. I wanted to keep that cycle of love and high, high vibrational healing. Um, so I have pieces of phenocyte. Um, then what we do is to focus more energy. So we have energy coming from spirit into the copper uh, pyramid. I also want to get energy coming from the earth and from the world around us, right? So if you, as you can see here, I have all of these crystal points, which are reversed where the point, some points are going inward, some points are going outwards because you do want to remove negative energy. You want to remove energy from 
a crystal grid. You want to make sure that there's energy coming out and energy coming in, or no matter how much you purify the energy, it will get stagnant. So you always want to have movement of energy moving in to the grid and out of the grid. And so I do that with these crystal points that line the side of the grid. But we also will see I have three crystal points going into each part of the grid. So remember what I said earlier about what pyramids do. Pyramids draw energy down from spirit into their pinnacle point and then pull it down and out and it pumps it out into the to the area, right? Okay. Well, what I did is I sort of backflowed the energy by placing three crystal points pointing towards the pyramid at each corner. So three points are pointing inward at each corner. And what that does is it sort of backflows the energy. Energy comes down from spirit and instead of coming out into the whole room, it pushes it back into the inside of the pyramid. And <clears throat> what that does, is it keeps pumping this energy into these little phenocytes and these little rose, rose quartzes and keeps this generator, this, this uh, cycle of energy going right back into this pyramid and into this box that has all of the names for healing in it. Then I have two uh, Auralite, Auralite stones. Uh, they're kind of like Super 7, so Auralite 23, and it is 23 minerals within it versus a Super 7, which is 7. Um, and when I have them here in this crossing path is because I wanted to create this vortex of energy, right? And so it comes in and the, uh, this corner, so this P, this point, pushes energy into this corner. This corner pushes it back in and that way. And it, all these pieces just kind of create this cyclone of energy going in a counterclockwise, direc counterclockwise direction. Counterclockwise is used for purifications, healings, to remove negative energy. So then we get into other little areas. So we talk about what pyramids do. So one of the best ways to use and to take advantage of pyramid energy the best way possible is to use a multitude of pyramids. You see this with one of the greatest civilizations that ever existed, the Egyptians. They didn't just have one great pyramid, they had multiple great pyramids. And so when you have the large pyramid here, like the center pyramid focused in Egypt, take smaller pyramids, as you can see I have all around in the four corners, and what that does is these pull down small amounts of spirit energy and filter it into the rest of the grid in order to keep all of this charged separately. One reason that's really great to have multiple areas of energy coming into a grid is because I do find that from time to time, uh, if, if you don't cleanse them, if you don't you know, work with them regularly, you, I, you'll get crystal fatigue. The crystals will sort of get a bit tired of channeling energy um, for a specific purpose. They channel energy constantly all the time uh, as they work, but when you intentionally cha charge them for a specific purpose, that purpose can start to fade after a while. So when you add points, multiple points of energy input into a grid, it allows there to be less stress on each grid, on each grid component, um, and allows for there to be almost a companionship of work. You wanna treat crystals and crystal grids the way you would treat a beehive. They all work together, they work very cohesively, and they have a queen. The queen is the practitioner creating the grid. The crystals are the worker bees. They love doing this work. They're here to raise the vibration of the planet and people who use them, and they're here to sort of keep a spiritual um, balance. And so they love doing their job, they love what they do, um, and when you give them a job to do, as long as you do it with love and respect and kindness, they work like a power horse for you, and they love to do it. 
So we see the inside, we see how this everything's being built. So one of the fit my favorite crystals to use when it comes to sending energy out in a distance is the um, satellite form of aragonite. Aragonite satellite form can be programmed to help pull you back to center. It's a very grounding stone. It works with the sacral and the root chakra. And it can be programmed to help you through chaos. So it can help either act as a focal point for all the chaos to sort of find a center in your life and you feel centered again, or it can be programmed to do the opposite and send energy in every direction around you. You have to think of like how a satellite that is orbiting the earth is sending out radio signals all over the planet and all over the world and it's just sending this energy like a grid throughout the whole world. Um, that's what these um, satellite form of Argonite can do. And you just simply have to program it to do that. Um, and that's just with intention. You know, it's really as simple as intention. So I have it set to where the energy all focuses on, on the healing and then the box, once it receives it, the uh, crystals and everything in here and the intention is that the Argonite takes all the energy and sends it out into the universe and sends the healing to those who need it. So this is just one level of this healing grid, which is just using the crystals themselves. I have a lot of different things going on here as well. So scolocyte is what this little white pyramid is, and scolocyte is also known as the helping hand stone. It's one of the 12 synergy stones, such like phenocyte, um, and it is a high vibrational stone, but it is, I call it the helping hand stone. What it does is it helps boost the effects of all stones around it. So I added scolocyte because I really wanted that boosted effect. I wanted everybody to just sort of have, essentially it gives every stone an energy drink. Uh, unikite, so unikite here, is, it's a little hard to see. Um, I'll make sure that you can see it a little bit. So here's the unikite. Unikite is a great stone for healing. Um, it is sort of like the southern mother grandmother you sit on the porch sipping iced tea talking about your problems they let you get away with complaining and, and being sad and just feeling sorry for yourself and then after a few minutes they're like okay now what are you going to do about it let's fix the issue let's not just sit here and wallow let's fix the issue um then i have uh this quartz pyramid here which has the four elements on it earth air fire and water um you, i always like to incorporate some sort of earthy gaia energy and the four elements are really great for healing because when they come together, they create, they create quintessence. Quintessence is the energy of life and creation. And so we want to create healing. We want there to be miraculous healing. And so I wanted to make sure I included the four symbols of the elements and um, from alchemical um, spiritual practice. So I have my, my friend Ganesh here. Uh, he's sitting on a piece of uh, lapis. Lapis lazuli is a stone about truth. It works with the throat chakra. It helps aid communication. It helps boost sense of truth. And it is a very powerful stone and it's said it's connected to uh, like the king of the gods, Zeus. It's a very powerful um, stone about truth and honesty and just. And we want the healing work being done on everyone to be true, honest, and just, right? Um, so this is really what we have going on here. I have, you know, three quartz spheres. I have a smoky quartz, which is a bit grounding. Septarian is a very, this sphere is called Septarian. It's a very powerful stone. It's a dragon stone. Um, it is very fiery and intense and really great for um, um, finding power in things. So, there's a few other elements that I have here that I want to talk to y'all about, and um, we'll do that kind of quickly. Um, so, I have angelite. I have an angelite stone here and a red jasper. This is the notebook where I was writing everyone's names down. Uh, I got this from a recent event that um, was held. It was the uh, Touching Eternity, and it was a wonderful event, and so I really... Um, it was a perfect notepad, notepad, notepad for that. Uh, the candle in the back, the green, which you can kind of see, it's Energy Sense candles. Um, this, the woman, her name is Brooke Espinan. She is an amazing healer out of Lafayette, Louisiana. 
Uh, she makes energy sense candles. She does Reiki and shamanic healing on her candles. Um, and they are made and based off of different angels and uh, their properties. And this one is a Raphael candle. And you can look her up online and on Facebook. Um, love her candles. Her candles are amazing. They're very, very um, high energy. I love having her candles. Um, so let's get into the even deeper part of all this, right? So the box I chose for the healing grid is this brass box. So in ancient times, like in ancient Greece and Egypt, brass was used for healings and purifications. Uh, it was used for like spell work or ritual work if you wanted to protect someone or bring healing to someone. I also like it because it has a little latch on it because it's chock a block full. <laughs> um, these are all the names that I have in the in the book in the box. Um, these are all going to be getting taken out today, um, and then I'll start over new tomorrow. Um, I'm resting today. I don't do work on Thursdays. Um, so these are all the names of everybody we did healing on yesterday, and they're going to remain in the box for for most of the day today. I'm going to take them out tonight, and. Um, and I'm going to burn them because I want to spiritualize energy. So when you put something in a, in a spiritual fire, um, it, it burns the energy and sends it into spirit. So the papers are going to be burned. And uh, so the energy can really take effect and become spiritualized. And that healing can be set in motion and finalized. So in this box, we have a couple more pieces of phenocyte because I wanted phenocyte to be... Um, a major part of this grid, right? Because it's such a powerful healing stone. A ton more rose quartz. I wanted that love to be the basis, to be the base of this healing. Green tourmaline. Green tourmaline is a master healer. It is, uh, it's, it is great at healing um, physical issues and uh, emotional issues. And then underneath all of this is this beautiful kunzite tablet that I have and uh, Kunzite is such a radiant stone. It really helps with unconditional, divine unconditional love. And I really wanted to make sure I had a way to channel in that divine unconditional love of spirit. And Kunzite really does that. And so that is the basis of this healing grid as well. So all of these names are going to get put back in here as best as I can because I have a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> and um, and so, uh, yeah, so what we did is I put everyone's names in here. We're going to go set this down and I'll show you all what was going on in this healing grid. So, I would take out the handy dandy notepad. And we go to a page. I use rose gold uh, acrylic um, ink pen. And I'd write a name. And then, of course, healing is the intention. And then I'd write some sort of symbol. Everybody's got, everybody's was a little different. I'd either write a heart or something. It's whatever spirit inspired me, inspired me to write. So then we close the pen because I don't want it to dry. Go to the name. We go ahead and tear it out of the book. Place the book back here. And then came the healing portion, right? So we use the hyssop. Blessed hyssop, wash them clean, heal their ailments, seen and unseen. Fold it. And when I say heal their ailments, seen and unseen, my intention is to heal things that are physical, mental, emotional, things that you can see and things that you can't see. Fold it again. We're going to create a little pocket because we want to fold in all that energy. So we're folding inwards, folding, folding into the name every single time. 
because we want the intention to go to that name, right? So the name gets placed, gets placed into the box. Box is closed, placed into the grid. And then I would sit here and pray for a minute. Spirits of light, spirits of healing, come into this altar and bring forth your might. Let the basis of love fill the recipient of healing and heal them in all ways, mind, body, and soul. That which was ill is now well. And I sit, I would thank Spirit, I thank Spirit and Mary and Ganesh and everyone for their healing and then I would be done. So that is the healing grid that I have built up for uh, the work that I've been doing for remote healing. It will be staying up for quite a while. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna let you look at this for just a minute so you can kind of really get the full scope of what all was going on. a lot of work that goes into my crystal grids. Oh, um, one thing I guess I should have mentioned. Uh, I love choosing cloths that have designs on them. So this is a sacred geometry design called uh, Metatron's Cube. Metatron was a scribe of God. He was the researcher. He knew all things that ever happened. And so I like using Metatron's Cube because I feel like I'm connecting to... Um, all the knowledge of healing and spirituality that exists from the dawn of time. I really love Metatron's Cube, and it is also um, the culmination of all of the platonic solids, uh, which I'll get into another day, um, um, that make up the building blocks of the universe. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, here's the grid, and... Um, I'll give you a little more information in just a minute. Hey everyone, I'm back. So I hope you enjoy taking a look at the crystal grid healing altar that I have set up uh, for the remote healing work that I'm doing. It is a lot that goes into the work that I do with my crystal grids. And I do that and I do all that theater and I do all of the that work because I really want it to come through in the healing that I offer and send on behalf of spirit to everybody who put their names into this um, box. I want you all to know I'm so thankful for letting me show you all how this, how I do this. It is an absolute pleasure of mine. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, share this video. Um, it is going to be on Facebook and YouTube. And um, if you have any questions and would like to learn how to build crystal grids for yourself, I will be teaching another class, uh, Crystal Grids 101. And then I will be, I am working currently on a crystal grid intensive weekend where we build all kinds of types of grids, work on feeling their energies, and really get into the spiritual, intuitive way of building a grid. So um, thank you all so much. As always, it is your friend, psychic medium, Sean Michael Rutherford. As always, in love and light.